All right, so welcome to this video, concluding the applications of isotopes. Uh, and we're going to just get, touch a little bit about what a gamma knife is, how it works, and really in general how the particle accelerators work. Being that I have not seen this represented at all in any exams, and I've hardly seen this represented in exams, I'm only going to measure, I'll mention what we need to know, what we really need to know. This uh, picture brought to us by uh, Wikipedia, so thank you Wikipedia. And uh, this is the gamma knife, and the gamma knife is uh, a radio, radioactive, radioactive therapy. Radioactive therapy, we're using, um, essentially we're using gamma rays that are emitted from uh, a radioactive cobalt-60, cobalt-60 that emits gamma radiation. It emits gamma radiation, and we're focusing this gamma radiation to target a tumor in our brain. <clears throat> and it's very important to understand that when you see this thing, you're wondering, hey, when would I ever want to shoot gamma, gamma, multiple gamma radiations into my brain? And the answer is when you do not have a choice. So what we really want to think about is that we have multiple, multiple gamma rays coming from different sources meeting at a specific point. Now, the interesting thing is that it just so happens that individually, the path that each individual uh, gamma photon goes through, it doesn't cause a great deal of damage. But when they converge, when they converge at a single point, they cause great massive ionization, and that can actually, uh, that can cause the destruction of the tumor, or so this guy hopes. So this is basically what we're doing when we're uh, using a gamma knife. And it's important to understand there's no cutting involved. There's no cutting involved. This is a non-invasive um, maneuver. And this is just focusing gamma rays from different directions in a single target to, uh, to um, in, a, in a therapeutic manner, to target tumors. And this is basically it. And as far as particle accelerators, and again, I'm really going to touch on the basics. We can accelerate ions by alternating currents. And how does that work? Let's just say I have an electron here. This is my electron. I'm actually going to color it. Let's just use a color here. This is my electron. And let's just say that I want to accelerate it. What do I have to do? I want to accelerate it over here. What do I have to do? Well, it's easy. Electrons are are, are are uh, attracted to positive charges. So I can, just, I can just charge these plates positive, and it just so happens that at this point, it is going to occur here as well. And the other side is going to be negative. And you're going to see where I'm going with this, but basically, this is what's happening. And at this point, and at this point, what happens? This, this little guy is going to accelerate towards this positive charge. And as soon as it accelerates towards the positive charge here, I'm going to alternate the current by, by sending a radio frequency pulse. And when this happens, check out what, what is going on here. And as this electron is accelerated here and it gets to here, it gets to this point, now this plate is going to be negatively charged and this part of the, the next plate is going to be positively charged. And now this electron is going to accelerate towards this plate. And as soon as this electron, and then, you know what, I'm just going to, and is this going to be positive? And as soon as this electron gets to this plate and it passes this side and it gets to this side, this side is going to be now this side. And again, there's alternating currents all the time. When the, when the radio frequency uh, alternates our current, this positive, positive turns into a negative here. I'm going to have a negative charge here because the currents alternated, and now this is going to be positive. And now it's going to accelerate again. And I'm going to keep alternating the currents, and it's going to accelerate more and more. And you will notice that the last few plates are in the same size, and that's because as it's accelerating, and the end is going to reach a terminal velocity. And the faster it is going, the longer, I, uh, the bigger a plate I will need, because it will take more time I would need more time to interact with the electron to accelerate it because it is going faster. What you really need to know with particle accelerators that, let's just give an example to what we can use them. We can use them to make carbon-13s for beta-positive uh, decaying isotopes. 
I don't imagine anybody's going to ask about it. Isotopes. I can uh, accelerate particles. And basically what happens is ions are accelerated through uh, different alternating alternating currents. And these currents are alternating via a radio frequency generator that is basically giving the pulse as to when this is going to be positive and when it's going to change to negative and this guy is going to be positive. He's going to be positive, negative, positive, negative. And this particle is going to accelerate until it gets to a terminal velocity. It's not going to accelerate indefinitely. And if you think this explanation was pretty shallow and not very in-depth, it's because I don't find it very important and I've never heard of any question asked about it and I can't really imagine that if they ask about it, it would be beyond the idea of accelerating ions through alternating currents and uh, with a radio frequency generator that alternates the current to make isotopes for uh, medicinal imaging or research. If you know that, you're good for accelerators. We're good for particle accelerators, and it's important to know that we have linear accelerators like this one, or we have we have cyclic accelerators. That's pretty much uh, that's pretty much where we are, and uh, hopefully you found these few videos about the application of isotopes um, useful. And we're going to see you in the next video about the ultrasound.